The past and the future are coupled through a circular feedback of histories and projections, narratives of both explanatory and of world-making power. Scientists find themselves in a variety of world-making roles in which, through construction of models, histories, projections, and new technologies, they program and reprogram the Earth. My project is engaging with the fact that the technologies and mindsets we're equipped with are also the product of these models, simultaneously limited by them and conserving them. One of those models is the imaginary of the Earth as a mechanism with parts that are known and processes that are known. A technological object, which as any technological object can, on, can be not only controlled or programmed by humans, but also replicated by them, engineered. This makes the idea of geoengineering possible. These models are also vigorously conserved. Despite what the rhetoric of corporate techno-optimism regarding disruption would like us to believe, those currently in power want things to stay just as they are. So the strategies employed to amend the present problems are those that maintain the status quo and that are going to benefit those currently in power. This is worth keeping in mind when attending critically to the notion of engineering the Earth. Geoengineering discourse is centered around questions such as, are the benefits of geoengineering greater than risks? Or what would be the side effects? In this context, a question arising from indigenous groups, is the present socio-nature even something we want to preserve, is what Jacques Rancière might call a scandalously wrongly posed question. Rancier wrote about how wrongly posed questions can intrude into otherwise ontologically and politically stable reality, allowing its previously hidden aspects to suddenly emerge. The example he cites is the first French feminist who asked in paradoxical terms, is a French woman a French person? A question that dismantles the seamless identification of man and citizen just as the decolonial perspective enables us to ask the question, are today's socio-ecological systems the ones that are important to conserve? An implicitly normalized assumption underpinning the notion of geoengineering. My project points to this unthought that structures the thoughts and how it is constituted. The three clouds are as material as they are medial, systems of signs and molecules that formed the temporary cultures and atmospheres that conditioned and that disclosed a particular kind of world, particular kind of nature, and particular kind of human. Atmospheres and environments, whether effective, informational, or meteorological, foreground the diffuse and withdrawn from apprehension aspects of conditions of immersion. In those envelopes, it's the flows of circulation that structure the terms of relations, invisibly, infrastructurally. The three clouds show how the past imprints itself in the future, how the present that we inhabit bears traces of the past futures. What this project also attempts to point to is that we're not attendant to the futures where these models no longer hold. Geoengineering being inherently based on the conservative notion of how the world was on the, and on the attempt of conservation of that past or, or for some still undisrupt present. It is not the strategy of resilience that it tries to portray itself as. It forecloses the futures that are emerging, forecloses attending to those futures. In a destabilized system, the ability to project into the future is fraught with ever more uncertainty. We are entering the terra nova of system behaviors of these linked ecologies and economies. Our, system, our knowledge systems that rely on rationality, um, that are the crux of these mechanisms of system representation and modulation, carry their inherently conservative orientation uh, because it's premised on the past always repeating itself and are going to have to transform in the face of new conditions and new atmospheres. This is where we want to be asking the wrongly posed questions. As Rensira writes, the wrongly posed questions make it possible not only to reveal a logical breach which itself unveils the workings of social inequality, they also make it possible to articulate this breach as a relation, to transform the logical non-place into a place of polemical demonstration. 
In the current moment, in the midst of pandemic and protests against systemic injustices and inequalities that rip apart the precepts of the established social and epistemological order, it is perhaps the practice of asking questions that will allow us to see and act beyond what the current atmospheres disclose, and that will perhaps allow us to open to another climate future than the one we are on the path to enacting.